hopeless upside down. That is our theme for the month of April. Everything feels upside down, but also we're learning about how Jesus changes everything. He takes everything and flips it upside down with the sacrifice that he made for us and the way that he lived. He lived a truly humble life where he put everybody first, even when he should have been put first for sure. Today, I'm gonna to talk about what ice cream has to do with Jesus and humility. This ice cream is cookies and cream, and it's pretty good. Mm, it's really good actually, but believe it or not, I bought this ice cream by mistake. For some reason, I was thinking that Jacob's favorite flavor was cookies and cream, and it's not. It's cookie dough. My favorite flavor is actually Moose Tracks. Phoebe likes vanilla, and Esme likes pretty much any kind of ice cream that has chocolate mixed in it. So, even though ice cream should be fun and yummy and a good time, when we get it, it can kind of be a battle at our house since we all have our favorites. So what do we do? Do we dig in and take a big bite of our favorite ice cream and say to the other person, sorry for you? Or do we choose to show a little bit of humility and put others first? What are some other options that we have? Well, for example, Phoebe likes vanilla, right? So what if we took that vanilla ice cream, and since Jacob likes cookie dough, maybe we can mix some things in it, like chocolate chips or even cookie dough, if we have that, um, the ingredients for that, and make his favorite flavor. And I like moose tracks, which is pretty much just chocolate and peanut butter. I could put that in vanilla ice cream, right? Either way, it's important to um, make sure that we're not putting ourselves first. We, we put others before us. So. Today we're going to do a fun game. I'm going to make a secret milkshake for Jacob. I'm going to take this ice cream and I'm going to put three secret ingredients in it. Don't worry, they're going to be really yummy ingredients. They're going to be all things that he likes. I'm going to show him that I'm going to put them first, even though I messed up with this cookies and cream ice cream, by putting in ingredients that he loves in his ice cream. And then we'll see if he can guess what they are. So uh, I'm going to go make that milkshake. Jacob, you need to go away. Hey guys, I just made the milkshake. You saw all the secret ingredients that I put in it, all things that Jacob really loves. You might have been tempted like me to put some funny ingredients in there like pizza because Jacob loves pizza or um, maybe his favorite vegetable. I don't know, but don't do that because you know that would it taste very good in a milkshake and that wouldn't be putting him first and showing him that I care about him. So I'm gonna call him over here, he's gonna taste it. Let's see if he can guess the ingredients. There's a spoon because right. it's kind of hard to drink. <laughs> All right, I'm supposed to guess? You got to guess. Okay. So how many ingredients are there that I have to guess? Three in addition to the cookies and cream. Okay. So there's definitely peanut butter in it. How do you feel about peanut butter? Oh, I love peanut butter. Love peanut butter. If I had to choose one food to live off for the rest of my life, it would probably be peanut butter. So is that a good choice for your milkshake? Definitely. Okay. Um, does milk count as an ingredient? No. Okay. Um, something crunchy now. That might just be the cookies, though, from the cream. Frosted flakes. <laughs> How do you feel about frosted flakes? I like frosted flakes. They're pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. <laughs> chocolate syrup. Nope, it's something chocolatey and crunchy though. Chocolatey and crunchy. 
What is your favorite McFlurry to get that I always make fun of you for? Oh, your second favorite. Turtle? McFlurry? Oh, M&M's. M&M's. <laughs> M&M's. There's M&M's there. What do you think of your secret milkshake? It's good. It's That's delicious. Good. Thank you. I hope you had fun with the milkshake game. Maybe it's something that you guys can play at home. But just remember when you're making the secret milkshake with the secret ingredients that everything that you choose to put in there is something that the person that you're making it for is going to love. Okay? We're going to go for a Bible story. It's in Luke chapter 24. It's um, right after the Easter story, after Peter and John went back to the tomb to check for Jesus and he wasn't there. So two of Jesus' followers were walking to a village called, let me get it right, em em Emmaus. Emmaus. See, sometimes words are hard even for your teacher. They were walking to a village called Emmaus and they were walking all the way from Jerusalem which was like a seven mile walk. So the first activity that we're gonna do today is we're gonna go on a seven mile hike. So grab your shoes, lace them up, put on your sweatpants, maybe get a water bottle, and let's go. I hope you didn't actually just go for a seven mile walk. That would be a little bit crazy. Maybe take a walk around your block or your neighborhood. Whatever your parents say is the safe thing to do and probably take them with you, okay? We're going to continue our story, though, about the two men who were walking from Jerusalem to the village called Emmaus. And as they were walking, they came upon this man, and they didn't recognize him. They had no idea who they was, and do you know why? This man, he did something to keep people from recognizing him. Do you know who it was? Did you say Jesus? It was definitely Jesus. He kept himself from being recognized by other people. So when people came upon him, like these two followers in the road, they had no idea who he was. He was totally confused. So let's get a little confused. What I want you to do, safely. Remember what I said? Safety first. I want you to get into a big open space where there's nothing sharp or um, dangerous to fall on. And I want you to spin around 15 times and then try and walk in a straight line, okay? Come on, let's do it with Esme and Phoebe. Are you back? Are you still confused? People in our story were. Remember, Jesus had changed his face so that he couldn't be recognized. So as they were walking, this man that they didn't recognize said, what are you discussing as you walk together? They stopped and they were really sad, remember? And they said, well, are you like just visiting Jerusalem? Are you like new here? Do you not know what happened? And Jesus said, well, what happened? So they told them about Jesus of Nazareth. They said that he was a prophet, powerful in word, and in his deed before God and all the people. And then they told them about the chief priests and the rulers who made up lies about him. And they sentenced him to death and nailed him on a cross to die. And then they told them this next part, which is super duper important, guys. This is the most important part, probably. It's really important. This is why Miss Jessie is going to go over it again, even though it's a couple weeks after, after Easter. And um, we're going to go over it. We talk about it all the time in class, right? We should. So stand up, and I want you to do these actions with me, okay? My hands, and I want you to think about what we're saying so that we can tell other people about them, about what I'm saying and what the Bible says and what these men told Jesus that happened, okay? So here we go. We had hoped. Show me you're hoping. Are you hoping? I'm hoping. We had hoped that Jesus was going to set us free them hands okay plus it's the third day one two three since all this happened a few of our friends amazed us <laughs> amazed they went to Jesus's tomb early this morning and found that it was empty okay so think about that hoped three days amazed and empty 
and I forgot free. Jesus is going to set us free. Don't forget the freedom fingers, okay? All right. So now we're going to go to the next part of our story. So we're in Luke chapter 24, and this is verse 25. Jesus, who the men still don't recognize, is going to tell them, he says, How foolish you guys are. Why did it take you so long to, real, to realize and to believe all that the prophets have said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? So then he went and he told them about everything that had been written about Moses and the prophets and then all the way up to the scriptures leading to himself in his own life. So if you look at this big Bible, you know, these are where the Gospels start. Let me find it. This is basically where the Gospels start. But that's, that's not where the story of God starts. It's all back here, too. All of this. It's the whole story. The whole story is important. And that's what um, Jesus was reminding these men of what the prophets had said, of what everything had said. So, these men, you know, walking... And like I said, it was a long journey, seven miles. If you took my seven-mile hike earlier, I'm sorry. You're probably pretty tired. So now, they're going to go home. And as they're walking and talking, they're learning that they like this guy. He seems pretty cool. And they're going to invite him to rest at their house because they're feeling pretty tired. So just for fun, we're going to play a fun game that my sister and I used to play when we were younger. It's called the yawning game. It's pretty easy. Basically, the first person to yawn loses. So I'm going to call Esme and Phoebe in here, and we're going to see who loses or who wins the yawning game. So I don't know if you guys know this, but yawns are really contagious. My mom, their grandma, is so affected by yawns that all you have to do is say the word, and her mouth just opens up really wide. Um, I'm going to try and remember all the rules to the yawning game. It's just a game my sister and I made up, so it's nothing really fancy. But one of the first rules is you can't touch your face. The second rule is you can't turn your face away while we're playing. And the third rule is um, that you, that you, if you actually yawn, just be honest. And that goes back to humility. Put others before yourself. Don't pretend that you won when you didn't. All right. So I'm going to be trying to get Esme and Phoebe to yawn. And we'll see who yawns first. I can yawn as much as I want to because I'm not the one playing. But they are. <laughs> oh, not touching your face, Evie. You also have to look at me. Otherwise, it's breaking the rules. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess they had just way too much coffee and they're really good at this game. I don't Miss, drink coffee. I do. Miss Jessie's nice and tired, so we're going to go on to talk about the, the rest of the story when these men are getting pretty sleepy and they have Jesus over. Whew. Whew, excuse me. So Jesus agreed to stay with these men. They sat down and they decided to share an evening meal together. He took some bread, and he broke it, he passed it out to them, and as he started to give it to them, the men realized that it was Jesus, and they were amazed to see him. But then, in an instant, Jesus disappeared from their sight. This is Luke 24, verse 31. I'll read what it says. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. So we're going to do one more game. Maybe this is something that you can do and you can post it. Um, you can email it to Miss Jessie or to the, our church page. But this is fun. This is a blanket disappearing game. Let's see if you can do it. We're going to try it with our girls, okay? <laughs> Did you do it? Poof! Just like that, you were gone. And poof! Just like that, Jesus was gone. There probably wasn't a poof sound, though. So the men in our story, they were so amazed. They were like, oh my goodness, did you see that? So they decided to go and tell their friends, um, who were seven miles away. 
you know what? I really think we've talked about this seven miles walk. For real, let's lace up our shoes and go take that seven mile walk. I really want to do it this time. I hope you didn't just walk seven miles. And I really hope that if you walk seven miles the first time, you didn't walk seven miles again. Because seven plus seven miles is 15, 14 miles. I really hope you didn't walk 14 miles because it's a long way. But that's how many miles the men in our story walked because they were so excited to tell their friends about Jesus and about what had just happened. So we're going to do one more quick little game so that we can understand what the buzz was like and how excited people were when they heard about Jesus. So I'm going to call Esme and Phoebe back in here in a minute. And I'm going to have them say a bunch of random words over and over with me just so we can hear all the craziness all the excited craziness that was happening when people heard about Jesus. Do it at home with your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your cousin, whoever's there with you, do it and just get excited, okay? Vanilla, Cookie dough, vanilla, chocolate, vanilla, vanilla bowl, mint chocolate chip, brown. moose tracks, cotton candy, <laughs> yellow orange, cake batter, blue, birthday cake, white, black. <laughs> That's probably not exactly what it sounded like, but you get the idea. Everybody was talking it all at once. They were really excited. There were so many things being said. It was kind of a confused mess of a story, but the men got everybody's attention and they said what they needed to say. They told people about how Jesus had walked with them, how they didn't recognize him, how he explained the scriptures, and then how they finally realized it was him and how he poofed. <laughs> okay, so I want you to remember that there is so much more to the story. That is our bottom line today. There is always more to discover about God's plan. Just like the men didn't realize, or they didn't realize at the moment, that God's story is so much more than his life starting in Bethlehem to when he died on the cross. It's this whole book and more. It's my life and your life and everybody's life. You can learn about it in your Bible. You can learn about it talking to other people and listening to their story. There's so many ways that you can learn about God and his plan and his story. So make sure that when you um, are out in the world and you're doing what you, you're doing, that you're acting like Jesus, so that you can learn about him. All right. So we emailed you the so-and-so show. We want you to watch it. We hope you have a lot of fun um, with Brandon and John this week. We hope you had fun with us this week doing the activities and just any pictures or videos that you have from this whole time that we've been doing it like this. I would love to see it and I miss you guys so much. As always, send me your prayer requests and I'll keep it to myself. I'll keep it a secret. Um, if you know you want it or if you want me to share it, I certainly will. There's our discussion board um, that maybe if your parents are comfortable, they can share pictures or videos there. Um, and everybody I know would just love to see some, some of your guys' faces. Um, before we go into our prayer, I want to go over our memory verse, okay? Miss Jessie drops off treats to anybody who sends her a video of them doing their verse, okay? Verse this month is, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. That's in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, okay? So I want you to do that memory verse. If you can do it without looking at it, send me the video and I will get a treat to your porch as soon as possible, okay? All right, so we're going to pray now and then we're going to have a great week, all right? Dear God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your story, the beginning, the middle, the end, and so much more to come. There's not really an end because it still keeps going. We thank you for our church family and our friends and the people that we get to um, learn with. And we thank you for um, the relationships. Lord, we ask that we continue to be humble, that we put others before ourselves, and that you give us gentle reminders when maybe it might be hard to do that. We hope that the lessons that we're learning together are ones that stick and ones that will teach us to live like your son. We love you. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Okay, guys, have a great week. I miss you so much, and I hope to see you soon. I will see you here same time next week, and that will be, will it be May next week? It's going to be May, so who knows what our next theme is going to be. Does anybody have any guesses? I don't know, but I'm really excited. I always love to see the new stuff. Bye.